Most people don't think about who they're going to vote for. And most people don't have time to follow the issues, which is understandable. I, do, I don't have time. This is, it's my job, and I don't have time to follow all the issues. I probably do more than most people because it's my job. But, like, come on, it's complex. Like, I don't know. What the hell's going on? But as a result of that, people don't change their minds very often. It doesn't matter who is being elected. People don't change their minds very often. There's a small group of people always in the middle who are going to lean this way or lean this way. And, you know, and that's who people, the, the politicians are really fighting over. It's that small group of people in the middle. Most people, they just have a, whatever it is, their party or something, and they just go for it. Usually it's a party, and that's just the folks that they vote for time after time. It doesn't matter which is how some of you may have this idea that, you know, when, when Barack Obama was elected and he was seen to be this radical liberal and people who are conservative were kind of like, how could people who are thoughtfully left, how can they support this guy who seems so radical left? In the same time, when George Bush was elected or when Donald Trump was elected and Donald Trump was seen as this like anti, this sexist, racist, whatever it was, the, the different ways that people see Trump. And the people are like, oh my God, I can't believe anybody would vote for that person. Well, people vote along mostly party lines and it doesn't change time after time. And, and I want to say this to you because it's really important for those of you in the United States or for those of you analyzing the United States that you understand that things aren't really as crazy as you imagine because most people don't even know and most people don't even care. It's, they just move forward. So look at these maps here. So this is the 2008 presidential election. This is when Obama was first elected. These are the counties and the counties that went red or blue. Red is Republican and blue is Democrat. So obviously, you know, the blue counties are the ones that have more people in them. Because basically they get the, the for the presidential election, Democrats and Republicans get about the same number of votes. So obviously then the blues have more people. Um, so go to the next one. So this is 2012, Obama's second election. So go back, go forward. Not much changes. Now let's go to the next one. This is Donald Trump. Okay, his first election. So go back. Now go forward, okay? It's like, all right, the similar pattern. People aren't really changing very much. They're not voting for Trump. People had no idea who this guy was. It's like, I didn't pay attention. He's just some guy, he's like a used car salesman that makes fun of people. So whatever, they vote for this guy, but that doesn't really, most people can't even, wouldn't even know how to spell his damn name. Go to the next slide. And here's Trump's second election. You see, it's like, it's not, people are just following. They're not making decisions. And so as we're thinking about voting and we're thinking about all of these issues, for most people, it's not even important enough to follow it closely, to understand, because it doesn't really matter to them. People are living their lives and it mostly doesn't matter who's in power. There's a lot of really extreme thinking in this country right now, and it's really dangerous. And it's extreme thinking by a few outliers, a small number of people on the far left and on the far right. And they're the outliers. Most people are in the center. And in the center are thoughtful rational human beings who are willing and able to communicate with one another, including communicate with people who are not like them. And that's true all over the world. All over the world. And don't forget that as we wind our way through this election cycle here, but in truth, also in your own country, wherever that might be. Brazil just had elections that were like really tumultuous. And most Brazilians are right in the center. 
It's just not about extremism. So I want to show you a couple things. And, and I'm doing this because I, I, you know, early in the semester, we did a class on the, the if you remember very early on, on the dangers of violence. So go, go, to, go to this slide, next one. So these are guns sold per month. And you'll notice in the United States how the gun sales spike at certain moments. Like here, you know, Obama gets elected here. Gun sales spike, right? Sandy Hook shooting. Trump, right? The election and the coronavirus outbreak. Gun sales spike. And they spike because people start listening to other people. And they start being afraid of what other people are thinking and what other people are doing. And when they start thinking about other people, they lose sight of the fact that most of us are right here in the center. Most of us are reasonable. Most of us are thoughtful. And most of us are very willing to engage people who are not like us. And it's never, it's never about those people and those people because those are the fabrications in our minds. The truth is, all of us are just like us. And us, like every person in this room, I'm certain there are probably a couple extreme thinkers in here, but the rest of us are an us. That we're like, yeah, whatever, yeah, I can sit down, I can do this, I can talk to that person, whatever it is, it doesn't matter to you. And that's how it is for the vast majority of us. And when we forget that, we run the risk of watching things fall apart. And that's what happens increasingly. What I'm seeing in, with these elections are like, man, people are building a lot of distrust and it's very dangerous. And I want to show you one. Um, I, want, I want to uh, show you two other photos because this, these, these gun sales, we talked about guns a couple of classes ago. Caleb sent me a, could go to this next slide. Dude, if you're, if, you don't, if you're not from the U.S., you see all these gun sales? Dude, we sell guns anywhere. This is, this is a, a gas station that's got a gun store. It's just like, yeah, you go get gas and you go buy a gun. On sale. On sale. Dude, go to, go to the next slide. The, here, go to the next slide. Yeah, here it is. Clearance sale now on guns and bows. It's like you go get gas and you go get a clearance, a gun on clearance. It's like, oh my God, y'all. Like this, seriously, this is, not, this is not the time for extremism in the United States. When we're buying guns like this, this is just not the time for extremism. So what I want to tell you is don't build that up, right? Don't build it up. It's like the election's fine. There's not going to be any fraud there isn't fraud in the United States to speak of. And the degree to which there are tiny amounts of fraud, it's like, yeah, it benefits the Republicans, it benefits the Democrats, a few thousand votes here, a few couple hundred votes there, this or that, or a dozen or one person. It is not systematic. It's not happening. And it's so dangerous, man. It is so dangerous. God, you drive me nuts. All right, next slide. Hey, um, so I want to do, I just want to, I think I want to have a conversation about voting. So I invited six people from class from six different countries. I just want to, so six of your fellow students to have a conversation about what, what it's like in their, in their lands. About voting, elections and stuff, right? Are we good? Dude, so yeah, why don't you come up, ma'am? All right, man. So, bro, let's just start. Let's start. Let's start with you, man. Oh, man. Do you guys? So, you, you all, you have a sultan. Yeah, Sultan that, Haytham. Yeah, who's a new sultan? So, t so tell it. So, you heard me. What I just said about an, a really benevolent king and a queen. Yeah. So you're the previous sultan, who was Sultan Qaboos. How do you pronounce? Wait, hang on, hang on. Don't say anything. Anybody know? Any, who knows something about? Not none of the Arabs in here. You can't raise your hand. Okay. How how many people know something about Oman? 
Anybody? Nobody? You know, we had, for example, can I, I just want to say this, bro. No one knows anything about your country, man. So this is all you, my friend. Uh, a couple, several years ago, we had a, there was a, an, an organization that was sending, bringing students over to Oman for like a 15-day visit. And, and a couple of students from this class applied and they got to go. Yo, man, they said it was like the trip of a lifetime for them, man. So, okay, so your previous... Uh, Sultan. Sultan Qaboos. How do you say his name? Qaboos. Qaboos? Qaboos. With a no, Q. Ka. Ka? Qaboos. Qaboos. Because Qaboos is something different. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, I won't even say it. I have no idea what I'm saying. But he was one of those people that... So he was in power from 1970 to like 20, about 2020, right? He just died? Yeah. About 2020, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was in power for uh, 50, 50 years. Uh -huh. And uh, he took power after his father in 1970, and he changed the country to what it is right now. And, what, and how did he change the country? So listen to this, y'all, right? So how, so how did he change the country? Um, he started building schools, hospitals. Well, Oman is, uh, we had like to rationalize everything before, uh -huh. and our oil became our oil. Mm -hmm. Not like some other countries' oil. Yeah. Like, like the British and like the Americans. The British. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. So he changed us like before him, we were not as developed or yeah. we had like nothing going for us yeah. in the country. Yeah. And after him, it's a whole new different country. And you and, and people, women had then also got the right to vote under him. Yeah. But women got voting, the right to vote. But you guys like voting is like. Yeah, voting is not like a big deal back home, but um, in different in different regions of Oman, we have different like women are not oppressed in Oman or anything like that. Yeah, women have before very, and very after different. because of him, because he it's had a, he because had of a the business. social and the culture back home. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, but the idea is like you guys aren't having elections. Okay, okay. Listen, man. Let me. Well, before him, also men didn't vote. Yeah. So no one voted. Yeah, nobody voted. Yeah. yeah okay, anyone. but listen, let me be really clear. Oman, for those of you who are, have a sense of this, Oman doesn't rank really high when we compare countries around the world on basic indicators of freedom. Yeah. Oman does not rank very high. But uh, in peace, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instability. No, but, yeah, totally. No, no, no. But freedom is relative, right? Like, yeah. do you like, look, you, I mean, those of you who vote, how many, who voted today? Do you, dude, do you feel more free today because you voted? Not really. No, you don't really feel free. Did it do anything for you? Do you feel like? Not immediately. Not immediately. Okay. So, so like, <laughs> so you got this system, right? And you got, I voted today and it's like, oh, it's all good, right? Well, how much does it, what's it really mean? So like for you in Oman, it's like, well, whatever, we're not voting, but like we, if, as long as we have a benevolent leader who's making really good decisions, then like, okay. Yeah, but it doesn't come to voting only at the end. Uh, freedom is not just voting. Yeah. You can't criti criticize like any, like um, for example, the US, you can criticize anyone and your vote, I don't know why guys, like people in the US are taking like votes like really easily. It's like a, f a privilege that you're taking it for granted. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're not voting. However, like right now, your vote wouldn't make any difference in the country, but it's your right. Yeah, it's a, it's a right, it, that's right, yeah. no, it's a right. And so we vote into power in this state, for example, we have a, we're gonna vote in a new governor. And so like, and so, like, d once the governor is in, like, the governor is going to do what the governor wants to do. And yeah. so, like, okay, whatever. So, I got the right to vote for this person, but, like, the person's going to do what they want to do. Th how much does it matter? This is a, just a th th and this is a sociology class, so we're thinking about this. Yeah, I hear that. How about, how, how about in India, y'all, like... Oh, man, don't ask you me. You guys take voting... Have you voted yet? No. Um, um, so I guess the age 
after which you can vote is 18 and yeah. above and or I guess nine, it's 19 I don't remember but I came here so uh -huh. I, I, I didn't vote there so wait hang on it's interesting that you said I don't even, I don't remember so you're you're like, you're kind of like most so many Americans who are just like yeah whatever I don't know I'm busy <laughs> Yeah. Even before, like, it's a bit off topic, but before, even before coming here, my friends were like, oh, you are the most typical American kid I could ever see in India. And I'm like, why are you saying that? Why is that? I don't know. Well, let, let me ask you this. Do you guys, do you have elections in the way, when you have elections, people are campaigning like it, you've seen it here? Do you see, do you see it here or not? Maybe you don't see it because you're on campus. I, I haven't been here long enough to see that. Do you have ads on, are you watching television at all? Or are you? I, I've seen plenty and plenty amount of uh, uh, commercials on YouTube. So yeah, 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 like okay. before watching anything, it's just like I have to see that political leader's face yeah. first, and then only I'm just like, okay. And do you, and are you all? Are you doing that in India also? Mm, it's it's more so say the same thing, but it's less digital. Like, like in comparison, yeah. it's less digital, but more like you'll have people outside your neighborhood yeah. with speakers and like announcing stuff and everything like vote for this person or vote for that person yeah, yeah, yeah. and like this person is going to do this for you if you vote this person and stuff like and that. And do, do your parents, do like people believe them ever? Um, at the end of the day, it's more like, like you said, that people just follow each other. Yeah. And so like even in my neighborhood, it's just like one of my neighbors, when you said that there are um, a few, few, there must be a few people here who like have extreme thoughts in regards to this. And yeah. so one of my neighbors, when I used to live there, he had very extreme ideas. And so like everybody, and I, I watched not only my parents and everybody, other neighbors like kind of follow whatever he said. Okay, I got you. And I was the one, I was like, no dad, you don't need to do this. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know what's the right thing to do. Okay. And so that's how it worked. Okay. But and and so mo but mostly people are not. Thinking deeply about these issues. It. Okay. Um. From what you can see, just listen. You're only 18, so you don't know. But from what you saw as an 18-year-old living there. Yeah. Actually, I just never hate, I just never liked the conversation that whenever anybody had such conversations, but I was just like, yeah, people do have ideas and everything, yeah, okay. but like, again, they, they do follow what others are okay. saying. Like. Yeah, all right. Bro, how, what's it like in Botswana? Now? Or is your family, so you get, you're a citizen of Botswana. Yeah, so like my family's originally from India, like yeah. that's my ethnicity, but my dad and I, like, that's the generation it started. Everyone's born and raised in Botswana. I mean, voting isn't a big deal like it is here, but it is still a big deal. The one thing I noticed is like, especially comparing to South Africa because it's so close, like no one publicizes their opinion. Like it's a lot more taboo to like talk about it. Because I remember in my, even in my household, like my dad would never tell us until we were like 14, 15, like, oh yeah, no, this is the party I vote for and all of that. Uh -huh. It was kind of just like, doesn't need to be publicized and uh -huh. like campaigning isn't so much in your face like it is over here uh-huh or like it is pro like in india campaigning is also yeah. kind of in your face yeah not in oman because it's like it's irrelevant <laughs> yeah so it's okay so it's kind of done uh, everything's done on the down low yeah like the most you'll see is like i'm um, there'll be like campaigning talks and stuff but the number one thing is like on lampposts when you're like driving Everyone yeah. will put like a picture of like, oh, vote for this person, and yeah, it'll just yeah, be like yeah. everywhere, and that's yeah. like the extent of it. Yeah. Do you know how many parties there are? Yeah. So like right now, there's about three or four, maybe five, but there's it's kind of like the US. So there's like two that stand out, but it's a one-party country really. So it's one party that's ruled since we got independence from yeah. the British. Yeah. But there's like an upcoming party that's got like good ideas, and they're like getting a group of people excited, but at the same time, it's probably not going to change anytime soon. Yeah, that's the nature of it. Yeah. Um, all right, man. D Doreen, Taiwan. Well, you're 18 too, right? Yeah, 19. 19? Uh-huh. Th what's, what's it like in Taiwan? Yeah. Um, so you have to be 20 in order to vote in the election, and then um, you only have to be uh, 18 in order to vote for the public issues. 
Wait, hang on. So say, so what do you mean by that? Uh, it's that like, um, uh, like, do you want the nuclear power plant to continue working or not? Or like environmental issues? So, so social and economic ish, the number of issues that are out there. Yeah. You got to be 18 to vote on those. Mm -hmm. But to actually vote for the election, is election like politicians, you got to be 20. Yeah. Whoa, seriously? So does that mean then you, like when you were there, you voted on, did you vote ever? Uh, no, because like, I just have to be like one or two months older, older in order to vote. Okay, I got yeah. you. Not, not, no, but I mean for social issues and stuff. Did you have a chance to do no. that or not? Okay, I got you. All right. And, the, and then how are, how, um, do you guys, do, do you consider yourselves to be a democracy? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, Taiwan actually moved from um, flawed democracy to full democracy two years ago. Yeah. And then it's like, I think it's ranked like uh, eighth in the whole world, like it's full yeah. democracy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, being pretty democratic. So voting's important. Yeah. Yeah. And then the voting rate is increasing recently. Yeah, more and more people. Yeah. Got you. All right. Tian right here is going to tell you all about China. And you want to listen, because China is going to be running the world in another 30 or 40 years. And so, and you might want to consider, like, taking a Chinese class so you can maybe learn how to say, welcome to McDonald's, can I take your order, or something like that. McDonald's won't be here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, you know... Once they kind of take over everything, because they're, they're, they'll take over Chipotle also. Listen, man, you know, we're so busy. Here's the deal. Y'all ready? I'm just want to say this, and I'm going to let you talk. Okay. All right. So, like, every five years, such as, like, this year and the previous five years, we're going to, like, uh, summarize what happened in China in the recent five years and we're gonna like to make a plan for like the next five years and with a few days and we're gonna make the elections for the president and all other positions here. But you guys, but the people, but you don't vote for the president at all and at those levels. You might research that like people like the 18 year citizens have their right to vote for Chinese citizens, but like actually most of us just don't vote and don't care about it. Okay, but you, but you only vote like, okay, so, Xi Jinping just got, you know, he just re-upped his time like a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. For another five years, which, yeah, okay. And I'll withhold, I'll withhold my thoughts on that. Uh, but, so he re-upped he re the game. So he's got his third five-year term, mm -hmm. okay? He's voted on by like, what, like 2,950 people or something, right? But like you don't, you would never vote for him. You can only vote for the local level people, right? Am yep. I right on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how is that? Like, how are those elections for local level? So you understand, like for, for the equivalent of the Chinese president, the people don't vote for that person. The, pers the, the people that vote for that person are people in the upper levels of the the, the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, okay? So they are making that decision. And presumably, by the way, can I just say this? Presumably, they're making the decision on the basis of like all sorts of interpersonal meanderings and wranglings and so on. But also maybe they're like making the decision on the basis of who's gonna be the best person. I don't know, well, that's not what happened in this case, but go ahead. But in local elections, have you ever voted in local elections? Nope. How come? Could, were you able to, or are you here in the US and so? Well, I don't know, like, like uh, what I'm gonna say, like the mayors here, like, I don't know a lot about it, but I just heard about like some people just gonna vote it, but. It doesn't relate to, to like the people around me or like the friends a lot. So they're just gonna, the people who are going to be in power. It's just going to be in power. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. Oh. So you vote. Hang on, I'll say it for you. Man. So you vote, but you got the person you're going to vote for. You put the check next to their name, but you know they're going to win. So it's like okay, got it. You kind of know it at the local level. So do you feel like? Um, I'm going to ask you this question that I ask Amir, Amr, Amr. 
Do you feel like somehow you miss out on something because you can't vote for your supreme leader? I, I mean, I'm saying it like, you're pre- let's say you're, you're leader, right? You're president. Yeah, I Are mean, you missing out on something? I would just say like the no comment because like probably like people know who is going to be the leaders, but like just all the citizens just care about like how they just leave and... Well, there is some like kind of the stuff or the, the citizen might know or might don't know, but I think like the, the citizens, like the people just feel like they just great leaving China. That's going to be fine. So you're just living. You wake up every day. Yep. You brush your teeth. Yep. You take a dump. Yep. <laughs> you wipe, unless you have one of those awesome Korean toilets. You wipe your ass, the whole thing, and you do what you got to do, and you have your cop, the Korean toilets, dude. You going to get one of those? Oh, you got one? Of course you do. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so then you, you have your breakfast, you do what you got to do, and like, all right, whatever. And, how, and so how, I want to know for you, mm-hmm. do you sit around, do people in China sit around thinking, oh, I wish we were like the Americans, that we got to vote for Joe Biden or Donald Trump or somebody? Well, we're just curious about, like, and just make a lot of comments on the Internet. That's about, like, the American election, about, like, who is going to be winning Trump or Biden. We're just curious about that. But But you don't really care for yourselves. It doesn't matter. Yeah. uh, Well, like, the Democrat and Republican, well, it's just going to be, like, who is going to be best her benefit for international students, I think. Got you. Okay, I got you. Right. I got that. And so, one final thing, though. Oh, well, hang on. Let's just go. Bro, what's in Tunisia, man, how, how, how are you guys rocking it there, this voting um, thing? Have you voted in Tunisia? Yeah. Yeah, so you vote kind of like every four years, kind of like here. And um, you also vote for – we have House representatives that uh, kind of makes a lot of the decisions in the country. Mm-hmm. And every two years, we vote for those two. Kind of Okay, so like the U.S.? Uh, yeah, but don't call me on that because I'm not very sure. Right, yeah, okay, I, like, m- like most people here, I'm not very self-aware about the politics of my country. Okay. So, um, so there's that. But w- in 2011, we shifted from a authoritarian dictatorship yep. to a more, let's say, to a more democratic uh, system. Where Dude, hit, listen, his country kicked off the Arab Spring. If you yeah. know anything about the Arab Spring, that that was like. Those are his people, by the way. But go ahead. Yeah, Yeah, so basically in 2011, there's a guy that was robbed by police. um, And uh, as a protest, he burned himself uh, publicly, which sparked a social media riot, which sparked a media riot, which sparked actual riots. uh, And we kicked off dictatorship in my country. And apparently that caused a lot of commotion in other country, other Arab countries, such as Libya, Egypt. Dude, um, you basically turn the world on its head. Yo, can I just say something here really fast? If you have the idea that, you know, at World in Conversation, our moniker at World in Conversation is a tiny act can have profound effects. So here was this man who had been had a push cart selling fruits and vegetables, I think, right? And he had his push card, and they had, he had we always, you have to, because it's a very corrupt system, because most systems are corrupt at some level, he had to pay bribes to the police, right? And he didn't want to pay the bribe. They came in to shake him down, and he just was like, no. And so they took his cart from him, confiscated it, and he wasn't going to get it back unless he paid the bribe, okay? So this is in the capital city in Tunisia. And so he... Then as, a, as he went down to the police station to get it, they were going to give it back. He went to the square, right outside the police station, right? Or a central square? Uh, no, outside the police, uh, police department in the uh, city of Said. And he poured gasoline on himself. He poured, he poured gasoline on top of his head. And he, there were people filming him afterwards, right after that. And all he said was, give me back my money or I will burn myself. And nobody responds. So he just burned himself. And there's a video of that. So. Dude. That act right there changed the entire Middle East and in many ways changed place all over the world, had an impact. This one guy, 
So I'm not saying that that's a good idea to go out and pour gasoline on yourself, but it is a good idea to remember that a tiny act can have profound effects, like really profound effects. So do you guys take voting? Do you guys, do you have, when you do elections? Because this is a new, this is a very new system, man. I mean, okay, before 2011, it was, we had elections. Yeah, yeah, with um, one winner. Yeah, with one participant, and yeah. the rest just was there to, like, with the illusion that, you know, we had freedom, but not really. Um, but what's funny is that today, for most of the conversation, like, my dad talks about politics a lot with other people, and when I'm there, I kind of, like, listen. For most of the conversations, it's like, it's not right versus left. It's more like dictatorship versus dictatorship. Like, if you want a yeah. dictatorship, yeah, we yeah, want yeah. democracy. Because yeah. apparently since 2011, uh, economically, we didn't fare what, better than before dictatorship. So people yeah. were like, just bring it back. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is the question, right? This is like, in, in a, like dude, bro, if you go back, to, if you go to Oman, for example... Like, would you trust your fellow country men and country women to make decisions, or would you trust your sultan? I mean, who would you trust more? I mean, decisions you have to say about sultan what? because you're on camera, but yeah, but no, decisions. just to make the best decisions for the country. I would trust the people. The people? Yeah. Yeah. You trust them? Yeah. But you're sultan, so compared but to. But I trust them too, but. You also trust the people. But I would trust the people more. Yeah?